Yo, what's up my fellow creatives? I have something exciting for you today. As you can see by the title on my screen here, Mid Journey Prompting Training. I'm gonna move my video down here. I wanna share this with you guys. I have something that I've been working on for quite some time and something I actually shared with the digital marketer community, which I'm a part of, that I wanna share with you guys today. If you are using Mid Journey, you need our prompting guide. And I'm gonna break everything down for you through all of these slides and take you through step-by-step -step of exactly what this is all about. So let's go ahead and do the slideshow and jump right into the video. So mid journey prompting training, the ultimate guide to mid journey prompting. Now, one of the challenges I saw is there's a lot of different ways that you can prompt. I've seen tons of people in mid journey in the discord servers doing prompting, but I want to cover eight different things with you guys. And then I want to be able to save this because I did a live presentation. Number eight will be questions for you guys to ask down in the comments of this video, but I want to cover these seven areas with you guys. So you understand the fundamentals of mid journey. If you've never used it before, and I wanted to make the most in depth, but also the most concise video on mid journey prompting that's out there. I've watched a bunch of different videos and I think what I've come up with is a lot cleaner, a lot more concise, and is going to give you a better quality output of your images. If you guys have any questions, any feedback for me, definitely drop it down in the comments and I hope you find this super valuable. So let's jump into it. So what is mid journey? All right. So the problem that I found is there are countless strategies and ways to prompt mid journey that will give you some great results, but some will take you far away from what you're asking. And this can take extra time and potentially cost you money, right? We want to get our job done as quickly as possible. So the solution I came up with is giving you a clear prompting framework that will give you the most accurate image you are looking for in just one single prompt saving you a lot of times how many times have you gone in and tried to use different prompts and changed your prompts right and also showing you the top prompts that we're using for different use cases and needs within your graphic creation so what is mid journey mid journey is a text to image ai tool that generates images based on your user's inputted prompts and mid journey moved to open beta in july of 2022 so we're coming up to a year the mid journey has been out now and that was already turning it's already turning a profit after a month and then two months later mid journey has already acquired 1.8 million users and this was a long time ago so imagine how many they have now a lot of users so what are the use cases for mid journey well social media images image ad creation product mock-ups logo designs app icons game designs thumbnails nails blogs and websites and there's even some other stuff that I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you with videos that I don't have time to do today you can even use for videos nowadays so they've gotten really advanced there's a lot of stuff to cover so we're gonna go through this quick uh, but the next thing is the limitations of mid journey this is something that you need to understand it it can't create readable text on a graphic if some of you guys have probably seen it has like this Russian lorem ipsum type text that's not readable you're not gonna be able to get readable text on it. So you're gonna have to remove that text in a graphic that it produces for you, at least for this time being. That may change in the future, depending on when you watch this video, but you cannot create readable text on a graphic. Number two is you can't replicate an exact person, even with a reference image. I'm gonna show you guys how to create an image based off a reference image. I've tried it many times. I've seen people get really close with certain prompts, but you're not gonna be able to replicate exactly and there's a reason for that they don't want people deep faking other people there's some te technical complexities there but you can't replicate somebody exactly you can get very close uh, number three is you can't create images including gore violence or sexual content now i've seen people actually get some sexual content by doing tricky little prompts if you're trying to do that you could get yourself banned or you know removed from the discord server or removed from mid journey so i'd be very careful about doing that but it's not designed for sexual content or gore um, so now that we've covered that, I want you to understand the actual account setup and when you're getting set up on the discord. So midjourney.com, you're going to go and create a discord server and you're going to add that bot to your own server. Um, there's going to be a separate video that I'm going to make for just that alone. But if you don't know how to do that, there's other videos in the meantime that you can watch, but I'm going to show you how to not just use the discord servers where everybody's creating thousands of images, but how to add that to your own server, which I'll show you guys here in a few minutes uh, on my own server. Now that we've gone through that, it's the settings. So let me go in here and show you guys the settings. All right, so the first part of the settings, I'm gonna move this down his slideshow again, is what you're gonna see is you're gonna see forward slash settings. So you're gonna go to that little prompting bar that's in mid journey. Let me just minimize this here and show you guys. You're gonna go into mid journey here. You're gonna hit forward slash settings and it's gonna pull up in this box. Now you need to know exactly what to put in there. So let me go ahead and show you. So you're gonna see it, it's gonna pull up like this, whoops. And when you see it, you're going to want to make sure that you select best version five or now, which they have is 5.1, as you can see here, then you're going to select base quality. You can change that if you want, but I like to select base quality. You're going to go style, which is right here, medium. You can adjust this if you want, but I stay styled with medium, just the best results that I've found to get. And then you're going to have your public mode, right? So you're going to keep it on public mode. 
Uh, you don't need to have it on. I think there's another mode where it's like stealth mode. You don't need stealth mode. Just keep it on public mode. Um, and then you have remix mode, which you need to turn on, which we're going to talk about later for referencing images and combining images um, is the remix mode you need to have on. And then up to you in terms of fast mode or or um, regular mode, they have fast mode and then they have relax mode. So you can pick either one of those. I like to keep my stuff on fast mode. It charges you a little bit more if you go to relax mode. Um, it's going to ch change some things, but you really want to focus on making sure that uh, you're not using as many credits as you can. So the fast mode is what I just prefer. Um, so you can use fast mode or relax mode. In fact, I'll just probably change this right now to fast mode. Um, this is what I've got it set on. So now how to prompt. This is the big golden question. The ultimate prompting framework is what I like to call this. When you look at the ultimate prompting framework, this is a prompt, prompting framework that I've color coded that allows you to put the right prompts in the right order so you get the best outcome possible. And so let me just show you what this is. So here is the template. So first you have the green, which is your media quality. Then you're gonna go into your blue, which is your media type. And then this is where you're the nuts and bolts of what it is that you're looking for. So the person, place, or thing inside of a location or whatever that is wearing this, right? Then from there, you're gonna have your style of how you're gonna actually stylize that person. And we're gonna go deeper into each of these. How do you stylize them? The lighting, the chaos, which is another piece that I'll show you guys. And then the aspect ratios. And then no, what you don't, these are called negative prompts. So these are really, really important. You wanna make sure, but this is your overall template of how you're gonna do it. And then as we dive a little bit deeper, I'll show you what I mean by that. So the first one here is media quality. So the three things for media quality that I like to use, and you might think of some other ones, is award-winning, professional, or expert. So I'm gonna pick one of those three. This is under media quality. I want my quality to be either award-winning, professional, or expert. The second piece here is I can pick one of these 15 and I'm gonna be adding some more here as time goes on. Photography, illustration, expert graphic design, vector sticker design, artwork, vector illustration, phot photographic portrait, sketch, product photography, cartoon, background, pencil drawing, poster design, business card design, and billboard design. So you can pick one of those and that's gonna be next in your sequence. Then from there is your person, place, or thing. So say I want a beautiful woman, which I'm gonna show you guys here, um, outside on a bridge, wearing a white blouse, right? We'll put something like that in there and I'm gonna show you guys my example prompt here in a minute. Then you're gonna have your art style. So I have 20 different art styles from Jim Henson to 3D renders to watercolors to Pixar to Thomas Kincaid to halftones. This list could go on and on and on. You could pick all different types of artists and art styles. Synth wave is really neat. Duo tone is, duo tone is really neat. The 90s point and click 16 bit adventure game, really neat. I actually pulled that from uh, Matt Wolf, who's a really amazing YouTuber. You should check out his stuff. Really cool guy as well. Brilliant man. He has uh, futuretools.io. Um, and then you have your lighting, which obviously we know in the video world and the photo world, lighting is very important. So what kind of lighting you're gonna pick? That's the next one. And you got 12 different kinds right here. You can just pull off of technically 13 if you really wanted to do these two. And then you have chaos. It goes every, anything from zero to 100. And so you can increase chaos and make it kind of wild and crazy. It just gives you a lot of different options. If you adjust your chaos, I would play around with this, see what chaos works best for you. You can go all the way down to zero. And you can not even include chaos if you want to. None of these prompts, you don't have to put an art style in. You don't have to put a stylized. You don't have to put lighting in. But the more you put, the better the result you're going to get. You're going to be able to fine tune this and get more re refined. And this is what I would call prompt engineering, which is going to be a valuable job here going forward with all the stuff that's happening with AI and things like mid-journey. And then the next one here is negative prompts, which is really important. Using no keywords to discard any unwanted subjects popping into your image. So like we're going to see here in a minute on this one, no fog, right? So I'm doing chaos of 20, which you'll see on one of the images I show you guys of how there's a little bit of chaos in there. I can adjust this down to zero. So this is one of the example prompts that I wanted to show you guys. Award-winning artwork of a beautiful, oops, I mistyped it, there we go. Of a beautiful brunette woman standing in front of the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge wearing a white dress. Oil painting, ultra realistic, highly detailed, whimsical, cinematic, 32K. Right, see, and this is all orange. This is the stylized effects. Extremely well made, volumetric lighting, beautiful lighting, back lighting, and then chaos, aspect ratio of 16.9, which is like a thumbnail size, the standard screen size, and then no fog. Okay, so you can see the first example of this oil painting, there's no fog, Golden Gate Bridge in the background. She's wearing a white dress in all of these. She's definitely very beautiful. 
Um, and see, this is with no reference image. Now, if I add a reference image, you'll see what happens here. So we're going to use a reference image. Let me just go back over to Discord and show you how that looks. So what you're going to do for a reference image is you're going to take an image. Uh, I think I have it over here. Okay, you're going to take an image, and I have this woman. I have lots of images. Oh, there it was. I just passed it. So I have this beautiful woman who just happens to be my wife. Let me show you guys here. Where did it go? Let me pull this back up in here. Just hang with me for a sec. All right, let's see. Here we go. So I have this beautiful woman, woman here that happens to be my wife. I upload this right into here. So what you're going to do is you're just going to click here. You're going to hit Add, Upload File. And then once it uploads, you're going to right click on it. You're going to hit copy image address. And then now you're going to go back over to Discord. And when you can just do something like imagine, right, which I showed you guys on the prompt, which is what how you do prompts. And then you're going to paste that URL in there and you're going to hit submit. And that's going to give you that that reference image. It's going to upload. It's not just uploaded, but you're not going to be able to do something like that. So let me just show you back here. So we're going to take that imagine prompt. We're going to put the image URL in there and then we'll put the remaining prompt in remaining prompt. So that remaining prompt was this in here and ultimately was able to give me when I did that is I used the same prompt that we used before and then I used her as a reference image and it spit out these four images. Now you can see these two, I mean, are pretty darn close. Is it perfect? No. Is her nose exactly the same? No. Her face is a little bit different, but overall, I think it got really, really close. Um, it's just not exactly like I told you. So then the next one here is combining images. So what you're going to do is you're just going to put two URLs in. So now we'll go back over here. And I did this just a few minutes ago as I took this URL and this URL and I had it on remix mode and I hit imagine first. So I went here, I hit imagine and I put that first URL in. So I pasted that first URL and then I pasted the second URL and I hit enter and then it gave me this image. And you can see here over on the prompting guide, this is what it spit out. It took both images. Now, out of both of these, I think this one's really nice because it got a really good shot of the Golden Gate Bridge. I think this did a really good job. And I also like this one. I think the backlighting of what it did here is really beautiful. Um, so the full image, final image export, and this is the next big piece, is to say, okay, let's say I like this one here that I showed you guys, this number four. So you have one, two, three, and four. I'm going to go ahead and hit upscale version four. And this is going to give me the final image here. It's going to load. And there it is. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, you can favorite this image if you want. And this helps tell Discord that you've liked this and you, that it did a good job. So it's going to help kind of teach the system. Now, something else to consider is you can go to version 5. And you can see some of the features go away. You can go to version 4. Some of the features didn't change on that one. Version 3, version 5, version 5.1. So you, now you have raw mode. And as I'm adjusting some of these stylizing, so you can see here, you can adjust these to just basically get different versions that you want. So I can remix these. I can change these up. I always stay with style medium, but I want you to play with this and find something that works best for you. Now, the next piece, like I showed you, is the upscaling. That's what the U stands for is upscaling. And then this right here are the different versions. So just to show you, if I wanted to create different versions of these two images, You'll see it's going to pull this open. I did version, different versions of this. So I like this image and I want four different versions of it. Check this out. It's going to take just a second to start. Um, you saw upscaling. You saw the very versions or variations. I mean, it's the same, same type of thing. Um, let's go back in here. And I want to show you guys something here. See, there's remaster as well, which you can also do. You can remaster the image if you don't like it. It looks like mid journey has, there we go. Beta upscale redo and light upscale redo. These are also two things that you can play with mess around with. If you're not getting the right, see redo light upscale, redo detailed upscale, redo, and then remaster. These are three other piece pieces and keys that you need to be thinking about. But let's go back here and see the four versions that it gave me. It's almost done here. We're at 83% right now. You can see here. It gave me four versions of her with slightly different variations. So the light is a little bit different on this one. And her eyes versus her eyes on this one. I don't like her eyes this much, as much on this one. Um, it gave me more of her shirt on here, which I kind of like. It gave me less of her of her chest over here on this one. It gave me a little bit more of her of her chest, but less of the of the bottom piece of her shirt. I like more of the shirt showing, and I really like the way that her hair has a lot of these highlights in it here. I feel like this is just the best looking one. So I'm gonna go ahead and upscale one, two, three, version three. 
There we go. And there we go. And so I can make variations of this one as well. But I think this one did a very good job. Now, if we go back to here, um, I want to show you, make sure you guys have this. So the final image export, you can up four images. You have your upscaling, you have your variations, and then you have your redo. Now, some of you might have the redo if you're an older version. Some of you guys might not. I know Midjourney's been making changes, uh, but these are things that you need to be taking into consideration and in doing when you're doing prompting. So let's just go back real quick and just do one more takeaway, one more, one more recap. So this is the prompting template here. You're going to do media quality, media type. You're going to say what it is that you want, then your art style, your stylized, your lighting, your chaos, your aspect ratios, and then no. So there's lots of fun that we can have here. I'm going to be doing a bunch more videos. Um, I gave you guys some of the use cases. I showed you guys how to do the account um, settings and setup, the prompting framework, and then we did some live prompting examples. And that's what I wanted to do with you guys. I wanted to show you guys that stuff. If you have any questions, if I went really fast and you need me to do a more in-depth thing, I, like I said, I'm going to show you how to add the server in a separate video, um, add the, the bot to your own server so you're not having to be in the crowded space with all the other mid journey people. Let me just show you what that looks like real quick here. So this is the regular mid journey server. And you can see here, there's a lot of stuff happening. So if you go to like general one, you'll see here, I can't even keep up with it. There's so many images being loaded. You can't even keep up. Look how some, how long some of these prompts are. These are extremely long. And then you have some people that keep them really short, a huge arcology rising like a tower of Babel from the Fraser Delta built in the style of the French Roman. Like this guy got pretty good. Um, look at this, this is beautiful. This image depicts a lively and cheerful seat and he's got all the details, cardboard cutouts, construction paper elements. So you can use references within the mid journey system, but again, adding and creating your own bot. The key to doing that just to real quick is add to server. You actually want to you want to select what server you're going to add it to and you just hit add and it's going to be right there but you'll have to create your own server first uh, and that's a big key part of it so i'll make a separate video for that if you guys have any questions on this video definitely drop them down in the comments i appreciate you guys watching thank you guys for supporting this channel if this was helpful for you hit the like hit the subscribe down below and i'll see you guys on the next video i'm adrian boysell and as always keep looking up